Magandang araw po sa ating lahat na imbagal daw kanya tayo. I mean, good day to every one of us. Right now, we are going to solve problem number 3 on dual purpose synchronous motor. Links are provided in the description below on other similar problems. I advise you have your own pen, paper, and calculator and solve with me. Let's read the problem. An industrial plant has a load of 800 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.8 lagging. It is desired to purchase a synchronous motor of sufficient capacity to deliver a load of 200 kilowatts and also serve to correct the overall plant power factor to 0.92. Assuming that the synchronous motor has an efficiency of 91%, determine its kilovolt ampere input rating and the power factor at which it will operate. Now let's try to understand the problem. We have an industrial plant initially has a load of 800 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.8 lagging. In order to correct the power factor to 0.92, a synchronous motor is to be purchased. This synchronous motor will be delivering a load of 200 kilowatts and it is assumed that this motor has an efficiency of 91%. We are asked to determine its KVA input rating and the power factor at which it will operate. Since we are asked to determine the KVA input and power factor of the synchronous motor, we will use phasor diagram for this problem. We will be needing the combination of the power triangles representing the initial condition, the final condition, and the power triangle representing the synchronous motor. So from this phasor diagram, let's analyze how we will determine the KVA input or apparent power of the synchronous motor and its power factor. By using Pythagorean theorem, we can determine the KVA input of the synchronous motor. But we need to also determine the effective and reactive power inputs to this motor. To determine its power factor, we just have to use this formula, the ratio between the real and apparent power. The kilowatt or effective power input of the motor can be simply determined by using the formula for efficiency since the output of the synchronous motor which is 200 kilowatts and its efficiency 91% are given in the problem. Cross multiply the efficiency and the power input we have power input equals power output divided by the efficiency. And let's say that this is the synchronous motor power input. Substitute the values. We have 200 kilowatts divided by 0 0.91. The value is 219.78 kilowatts. Now that we have the value of its effective power input, let's also determine its reactive power input. Again, let's analyze this phasor diagram. One way of solving for its reactive power is by taking a look at this part of this phasor diagram. It could be analyzed that the initial reactive power equals the final reactive power plus the reactive power of the synchronous motor. To determine the reactive power of the synchronous motor, transpose the final value of the reactive power to the other side of the equation. We have the reactive power of the synchronous motor equals initial reactive power minus final reactive power. So let's determine these values. To solve for the initial reactive power, let's consider this power triangle representing the initial condition when the synchronous motor is not yet installed. We have the values of its effective power and its power factor. There are two ways on how to determine its reactive power. One method is by using Pythagorean theorem. From trigonometry, we arrive at this equation. We already know how it happened. Please don't memorize this equation. It's been derived by analyzing this power triangle. But of course, we need to determine the value of its apparent power. Basing from the given values, we will be using the formula of power factor, which is the ratio between the effective power and the apparent power. Cross multiply the power factor and the apparent power, we have apparent power equals effective power divided by power factor. Substitute the values. We have 800 kilowatts divided by 0 0.8. The value is 1000 kVA. Now that we have this value, let's substitute it to this equation together with the value of its effective power. Initial reactive power equals the square root of 1000 kVA squared minus 800 kilowatts squared. The value is 600 kVar. 
or 600 reactive kilovolt ampere. The other way to determine this value is by using trigonometric function. The relationship of the effective and reactive power is tangent, that is opposite over adjacent. So to determine its reactive power, cross multiply the effective power to the other side of the equation. We have initial reactive power equals initial effective power times tangent theta. We already have the value for its effective power. Let's determine the value of its power factor angle. To determine that from the formula power factor equals cosine theta, theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the power factor. Substitute 0.8 to this formula, the inverse cosine of 0.8, the angle is 36.87 degrees. And substitute this value to this equation. The value of its initial effective power is 800 kilowatts. So we have 800 kilowatts times tangent 36.87 degrees. The value is 600 kVar. It is the same value we have using Pythagorean theorem. So we can use these two methods to determine its reactive power. Going back to this figure, we already have the value of its initial reactive power that is 600 kVar. We still need to determine the value of its final reactive power. We will use trigonometric function, although we can still use Pythagorean theorem if we would like to. We will be considering this power triangle. Again, it represents the final condition. We can determine the value of its effective power, that is just the sum of the initial value and the effective power input of the synchronous motor. The value of its initial power is 800 kilowatts. The effective power input of the synchronous motor is 219.78 kilowatts. Summing that up, we have 800 kilowatts plus 219.78 kilowatts. This is 1019.78 kilowatts. Now that we have these values, let's also compute for its power factor angle. The overall power factor of the plant is 0.92. Therefore, the power factor angle of the final condition, that is, inverse cosine of 0 0.92, we have 23.074 degrees. Again, the relationship of the effective and reactive powers is tangent. So cross multiply the effective power to the other side of the equation. Final reactive power equals final effective power times tangent theta. Effective power equals 1019.78 kilowatts. Substitute those values, we have 1019.78 kilowatts times tangent 23.074 degrees. Final reactive power equals 434.426 reactive kilovolt amperes. Now that we have the values of the initial and final conditions, let's solve for the value of the reactive power of the synchronous motor. Substitute the values 600 kVar minus 434.426 kVar. The answer is 165.574 kVar. And now that we have the values of the effective and reactive powers of the synchronous motor, let's substitute them to this equation. Apparent power of the synchronous motor equals the square root of 219.78 kilowatts squared plus 165.574 kVar squared. The answer is 275.169 kVA. This is the value of the kVA input of the synchronous motor. Now that we have this value, we can now determine its power factor. Again, that is the ratio of its effective power and apparent power. Substitute the values, 219.78 kilowatts, divide this by 275.169 kVA. The answer is 0 0.799 leading. Again, let's remember, the power factor produced by a synchronous motor is leading. Hopefully, we learned something today. You can try to repeat solving this problem for you to be used solving such problems. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Naimbag nga aldaw kanyato ay amin. Good day to every one of us.